You may well have heard the rumour earlier on. The Athletic started the ball rolling with an article about Sonny Perkins being of interest to Leeds United. I think Hammers News uh, picked up on it. Now everybody's running with the story. It's a strange one. It's not a link that you would think of. Some links are really obvious. I'll give you an example. Nathan Ake. I heard Nathan Ake's name. What well, was brought up recently, but it was brought up before. There's a natural link there. It was, I think, actually, we were linked with him in the January transfer window, quite possibly. Why is the link there? Well, it's there because he's a left footed centre half. I didn't particularly believe that one because, whilst it's a natural fit, Ogbonna was injured, all the rest of our centre halves were right footed, and it sort of made sense. I remember being at a Bournemouth game, a West Ham Bournemouth, and, uh, and it, was, it was an away game. I remember seeing Andy Carroll against him. I remember seeing Andy Carroll dominate him and thinking how small Ake looks. And for that reason, I never particularly bought into the fact that, or the concept that David Moyes would be interested in. Wasn't his sort of player. Good player, by the way. I wouldn't mind signing him at all. I really like him. My point is, it's a natural fit. If you're a journalist looking for a story, you, you can generally, OK, West Ham need a left-footed defender, central defender. OK, there's one at Man City. He's not getting many games. Let's run with that. That's a story. That's a believable story. It's an easy one to make up. This story about Perkins to Leeds, not so much. I mean, it's so vague. It's not, not vague. It's so obscure. It's almost believable. There are so many other players at West Ham who you could link with a move to Leeds that this one... It's almost believable that there is some interest there. Otherwise, why would it, would it have got out? And it's really important. You know what I'm going to say here? It's really important that this doesn't happen. There's, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think he's a good player. He's scored a hat load of goals for the under-23s. He's moved position. He previously played wide. They're trying to train him up as as a centre forward, a central striker, basically. He's also played for the first team this season. I do wonder if you remember that game. I say if you remember that game. I don't remember exactly who it was against. Uh, but he, he had a header in front of goal. And he sort of made good contact with it. But it, 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 the accuracy was off. If he'd have scored that, I think he may well have played two or three times during the season. But I think David Moyes likes him. So before anybody says, oh, don't get outraged, you know, it's just a rumour... I don't think Moyes is going to sell him. But it is a rumour that clearly something's coming out from the Leeds end. There's an interest from Leeds in this player. So firstly, I think we shouldn't sell him because I like him as a player. I think he's a good player. And you you read a few of the articles, and, and the Athletic one in particular, that they're just sort of looking for him to sort of develop a little bit physically, fill out a little bit, get him on the old state and kidney pie. Um, I don't think they probably do that, by the way. That's that's if you are um, looking to get into um, into sport or become an athlete, probably stating kidney pie is not the way to go. However, uh, that's one thing. The other thing, and I talk about this a lot. Here's a phrase I use a lot: is the messaging. The messaging is really, really important on this. A couple of days ago, I was talking about the messaging an early signing would make to players. We want to sign, and the messaging it gives to fans, a feel-good factor. That, that's different. The messaging here is all about to players in the academy and prospective players that we may wish to sign for West Ham. Let me give you a little example here. Let's go with uh, Carvalho, who's just signed from Fulham for Liverpool. Now, apparently there was some interest from us in that player. Now, I think it would have made sense for him to go to a a club that's different to Liverpool. I, I think that's quite a big jump up. Personally, I think Klopp may well use him, as I understand it. Fulham asked to have him on loan back, and Klopp said, no, you're not having him. But what you have to do when you're trying to tempt a player like that is let him know that you're going. he's going to be part of your first team plans. Otherwise, what's the point? Jude Bellingham is a, is a better example, actually. Jude Bellingham, uh, playing at Birmingham City, was 16 years of age. Not only did Dortmund say, we want to take you, Dort Dortmund said, actually, we want to take you and we're going to play you. Now, as I understand it, at the same time, Man United were interested in him. 
But he knew there's no way. There's no way he was going to play ahead of Paul Pogba. Probably bloody should have done. Um, but anyway, that was it. He needed to know that he was going to play. The messaging is clear. And at West Ham, we need to regain that reputation of being the academy of football. We need to let it be known to players that if you come to West Ham, you're going to play. Because quite frankly, when we were in for Carvalho, along with Liverpool and four or five other players, he's a ta uh, clubs, he's a talented player. Everybody wanted him. I think West Ham wasn't a consideration. I think if you're a young player looking to come to West Ham now, you'd probably look at it and you'd probably look at the, not David Moyes' reluctance to use players from the bench um, or certainly young players that he may or may not put on the bench, his reluctance to use them. You'd probably think there are better clubs. And that's something we really need to redress. Before I go any further, this video is sponsored by the One Football app, which you can download by clicking that QR code up there or underneath this screen. There's a link. The link takes you straight to the One Football app. You download it to your phone. And when you download it, it says, who do you support? What's your national team? For me, I say West Ham and I say England. And what it does, it aggregates all the news from all the websites, all the newspapers, injury news, fixtures, transfer gossip, results, predictions, everything you need. It just puts it all together and filters out all the crap that you don't want. Best of all, the app is free. Click the link below. I know you've come from Hammers Chat. So Perkins, us not selling him to Leeds is really important. There are a couple of other players we probably need to discuss. Players like Elise. Now, what we what we must do with Elise is I think there's, I've got an old saying. You know, um, once is a shame, twice is a coincidence, three times a trend. Let's look at Elise. Let's think. Okay, that's a bit of a shame. Because when I look at the lad, I think, well, do you know what, mate? You weren't ever going to get in. If there was a point this season where we had one fit centre half. Elise still didn't play. Well, if you're not going to, it's not, not going to happen then. You certainly ain't going to play once we've signed a guard and once we've signed and once Ogbon has come back, who's about to sign a new deal. Basically, Elise, you're never going to play. And, I, and so I think that's bad messaging for him. Now, I will allow it that that's a shame. Maybe Moyes just doesn't think he's going to cut it at the top level. I don't know. Looks a good player to me, but we'll allow him that one. But if it happens with another player and then it happens with another player, then things start to look pretty crap. I was going to use the, the uh, example of Josh Cullen. Josh Cullen actually wasn't that young. When Josh Cullen signed for Anderlecht. He might have been 22, 23, something like that. Goes to Anderlecht and I think he got their player of the season or close to it. Well, you know, was one of the one of the better players. Um, I think possibly Vincent Company was their, their manager there. Uh, he was even captain at one point. So you look at it and you look at the... You look at us in some ways struggling for central midfield. You think, why did we let him go? Uh, I think Conor Coventry's gone on to do some really good things. I think it's important that Conor Coventry comes back and now gets his chance. Um, because, again, we're dealing with messaging. It's the messaging that it sends out to other young players. And make no mistake about it. We are, West Ham and our academy is all about recruiting players. And it's not just forget this thing. Look, not everyone is Ben Johnson who joined a club at seven years of age. Sometimes we nick them. Sometimes we wait for them to be released from other clubs. Like, uh, like Declan Rice is a perfect example. We nicked him from Chelsea. Then you look at Oco Flex. He, we got him from Celtic. We're always bringing in young players in the hope that we can develop him into something else. But there must be, the carrot must be dangled, which is you come to West Ham, you stay at West Ham, you're going to get a chance of first-team football. At the moment, that is not happening. And I, I, I don't even, I don't even want to consider for a moment what it would be like for David Boyce if this kid went to Leeds, did well and started scoring. I mean, it wouldn't be... Uh, it would it would not be in for an easy ride at all. I'm not convinced he wants to let him go. And actually, let's be fair, Leeds do have a really good young promising striker coming up through the ranks. As I said earlier, there may be nothing in this story, but it is so obscure. It's a weird player to pick. And I can I think there must be some truth in it. And I can see it. I can see it. He is one of the outstanding players of his age group. And if we if all this is true, I don't believe everything that we're reading at the moment about David Moyes and his striker hunt. I honestly don't. I think, um, as I said yesterday, I really do hope it's sort of masking our our attempts to sign a player and sort of shrouding that in secrecy. And we are going to sign a striker. I know Gio's a run a video on it uh, as well. But um, if that doesn't happen, then someone like Perkins has got to get the chance. Too many times last season. 
the answer to well, there was no answer to Anaka Antonio. Anaka Antonio was just just played, 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 and then played some more. But sometimes there were there were times when he came off. We'd, we'd shuffle the deck a little bit. Bowen would be put up front, but more or less the option was Yarmolenko. I think what we have to do with Perkins, if we rate him highly, and we do, and the England youth level rate him highly, and they do, and clearly it seems that Leeds rate him highly, then that's got to be mirrored in what we do. And in those instances, we have to not only put him on the bench, we have to utilise him off the bench. There is another scenario that I think is acceptable, and that is that I don't know what his contractual situation is, but whatever I was going to say, give him give him a, a longer deal and send him out on loan with the stipulation to a club that he does play and get him some experience. But this is really, really key now because it's not always been thus that our, our moniker, which is the Academy of Football, has been accurate. There's been times when it has, there's been times when it hasn't. And I'm pretty sure that David Moyes would be able to point to his own record and say, well, hold on a second, I've got Declan Rice in the team and uh, I've Ben Johnson in the team. And you know what? I've actually, you know, tried to, you know, and Gakia would have featured under me as well. That's that's all well and good. But, uh, but young players get old pretty quickly. And, you know, I think it's very, very hard now to sort of look at Ben Johnson and particularly look at Declan Rice. And and say, oh look, they're they're youngsters that are in the team. There's a path through because if what it takes is, for, for instance, in the example of Declan Rice, if it, what it takes is okay, yeah, it's okay, technically he's in the team, but he is one of the best players in Europe. If that's what it's going to take, then maybe not everybody gets in. People need to get their chance. Really interesting one. Um, it's obviously a massive note from me. I don't even need to. Ask you, I know it's a massive no from uh, everybody watching this as well. But this messaging is very clear, very clear. And we have to send this out. No, he's not going to Leeds. He's remaining with West Ham. And not only that, he's going to get his chance. And here's the key. If he gets his chance and he does well, he has to be back in for the next game. I don't necessarily, that's it. He takes Antonio's spot and starts every game. But if he does well, Give him a chance. Give him two or three games off the bench. If he does well, keep him on the bench. Keep him as an option. And most importantly, when you get to a point in a game where things are looking a little bit stale, where there's nothing else going on, look to your bench. And if you look to your bench and you see Perkins on there, think, you know what? I'm going to bring him on. 